I'm actually going to ask for um, something that I would class as like a winter warmer but keeping the cost right down. So one of my favourite foods actually is sausages and there's nothing nicer than just uh, turning them into a stew. So because we're actually doing this in two loads tonight I've already fried them up. Now you're not wanting to cook these but you're wanting to fry them up so as you get some nice dark colour on them. I would go with probably three per adult and two per child, just depending on your family's appetites. Uh, I'm only making for Kenny and I tonight, so I've only got a few things on the go here. Um, I've already chopped some turnip and carrot, just into wee squares, but Kenny's coming forward, uh, which he didn't really need to, but never mind. We're going to just actually, sometimes, I mean, I never think about the fact that people don't do these things. So again, just for very quickness, or for very quickness, just for quickness, I would just keep things small and then straight down into three sections and that gives you quite a nice shape for doing your cubes. Just keep them small because this should only take 45 minutes in total to cook. It is the veg you're waiting on, the sausage will not take long. These carrots are clean so I haven't even bothered scraping them because the goodness they always say is actually in the skins. So we'll just quickly chop these down and the other thing I'm just going to show you, I'll just take that off the heat because these have been on for a wee while and I don't want them cooking, is a turnip. You just need to keep the turnip close to the rind, that it's almost like it has a rind, a skin, and that's all you're needing to get rid of. So. You'll actually be able to see it, Kenny. I'll just bring it, bring you in a wee bit here. You can actually just see that there is a rim the whole way around your turnip. And if you keep just literally peeling it, however you find it easiest to do, now I can do it like that, or if you would rather not do it near your hands, just cut straight down. It doesn't matter if you're losing just a wee bit. Because if you buy turnip and carrots, they last for so many meals as well. They, it's great economy. I mean, this actually was from soup at the weekend. You just keep it in the fridge. Bag it up and keep it in the fridge. And they should keep for a good two, three weeks. If you're lucky, maybe even four. You know, things can maybe seem a wee bit expensive to buy. But if you think ahead, that you could have this for soup for your stews, carrot and turnip together is just lovely as a veg, it just keeps the costs right down. I mean you can buy a bag of carrots for probably 60 pence and a turnip for maybe 70 or 80 depending on where you get them. So I'm going to just pop, I should have said I'd also fried an onion, uh, so one decent sized onion, have it already fried up, that releases all the sweetness of the onion flavour. I'll scrape that out in a wee minute waste not want not and then you're just literally putting your vegetables into it as well. Flavours. Now I've just got a mixture here of stock. Now it's up to you what stock you, you use. I, again I keep to my Polish one. You love in vegetables, I always say that. Now I don't want to put too much in because you can add, it's easier to add than take away. So just about half a teaspoon of, of stock going into that. You don't know how much salt flavour might come out your sausage. And always bear in mind that you are going to be using Bisto later and Bisto can add a, a saltiness too. So keep your stock quite low just now. But oh, I can't open this. Oh, goodness me. Teaspoon of garlic. Always need garlic, as you know. Half a teaspoon of mixed herbs. I'll not bother measuring it, but half a teaspoon of mixed herbs and some pepper. And that is the basis of your stew, your stewed sausage. All you're needing here is enough water, I've boiled it up already, just to cover. And then you're wanting to cook this for just 30 minutes. 30 minutes to 45 minutes, we're going to come back. That's one of the reasons we kept the vegetables very, very small because this way you're actually letting the veg cook quickly which you know obviously saves on your electricity costs as well. Now 
the eagle eyed amongst you might have spied the box of a Torah in the background. You can get this, this is beef suet, you can buy it vegetable if you'd rather, if you want to do these with vegetarian sausages, you know, crack at. We're going to do dumplings tonight, so we'll come back 30 minutes and check and uh, I'll show you how to make the dumplings then. So see you in a wee while. Bye! Okay, I've come back half an hour later and my veg is cooked. So I'll just take it off the heat for a second, let some of the steam out. Hopefully it didn't steam up Kenny's camera too much. So we're going to just make our Bisto gravy. And I was talking about using vegetarian sausages and suet earlier. Bisto is actually vegetarian. So for those of you that maybe didn't know that, there you go. Now I'm going to put three in, I might not use it all, um, that's just a small teaspoon, so say two teaspoons, oh, it should be plenty actually. One of corn flour, you'll be getting the hang of this, it's usually equal, sort of similar amounts every time that I do it, and just a tad of water. And then combine them together. Now I would say a wee bit of caution here, once you put the dough balls in, turn your heat wet right down because once you've added the bisto, the gravy can have a wee bit of a tendency to stick and of course you're needing to let the dough balls steam. So it's up to yourself, if you'd rather wait and then add this last, you just take the dough balls out and then quickly add your gravy at the end. We'll do it this way tonight, see how we get on. I'll make the errors and then you can decide. So just half of it just now just to see how we get on for feel the thickness and that's going to thicken right up tonight. So we might actually just add a tad of water to that because I'm forgetting I'm only cooking for the two of us. You might have a lot more liquid than this so I'll just put a touch of water in it. I can add more later if I want and then we'll crack on with the dough balls. Okay. Now, as I've said before, if you want to add a wee sheen to this, just a, a tiny wee drop of soy sauce just gives a nice sheen to it at the end. Loving the smell. The mixed herbs just add a nice smell to this. If you want, if you've not got mixed herbs, bay leaf, something like that will do fine. Pop that to the side. So, dough balls. What we have here is 200 grams of plain flour. To which we're going to add a teaspoon and a half of baking powder, helps with the rise. If you've got the proper measuring teaspoons, do use them. I have them somewhere, but tonight they weren't to hand. 100 grams of suet. Like I say, you can use vegetarian suet if you want, vegetable suet. You don't need to make as much as this. I'm making for four, although I'm only feeding two tonight. Just so it's not to confuse people with the um, amounts that will be on the recipe and what have you. You're wanting always to just have half the amount of suet to plain flour. Add that to your um, baking powder accordingly. A wee bit of salt, just a quarter of a teaspoon. A little pepper, just you're giving some flavour in here. As much or as little as you like of black pepper and a teaspoon of parsley. Dried is absolutely fine. In fact, dried is probably better because it just gives, again, a small teaspoon because it just gives a bit of colour and obviously some flavour. Now, to this you're only going to need four or five tablespoons. So just add a little to start and then mix it in. It's always easier to keep adding than it is to take the water away. So, pop that out of the road. Like I say, four or five tablespoons. Do as I say, not as I do. I'm just guessing as we go here. But I've been making these things for a long, long time. But I mentioned that actually the Bisto there, I'm going to give a shout out to Bernie Bell, one of our um, contributors to the Orkney News because she had said once before when I put up a stew dish that it looked lovely and I had said, you know, just always adapt for vegetarian or vegan and just check because most of these things will tell you now obviously if you can use them 
but I was, I was surprised, I must admit, I was quite surprised when we discovered that Bisto was vegetarian. For some reason that had always presumed it would have been beef based, but there you go. Right, just another little drop of water. Just to bring it together. It won't matter if it's stickyish. Better to be sticky than dry, but... Right. Oh, just another tiny, tiny wee bit. Like I say, it's better to be able to add water than take it away. And then this, again, up to you if you want great big doubles. It's a good big sized pot I've got. So I'm going to just turn this into four. Pop that on the road. Don't need to knead it or anything. So literally, and then once you've got your shapes, once you've got your quarters rather, shape them into balls. Now, like I say, get this on to a low, low heat. These will only take 10 to 15 minutes to steam. I've already got my potatoes cooking, broccoli to go on, and this will be our stew ready in just 15 minutes. Put that one over a little, and we'll come back and just serve it 15 minutes or so once it's ready and hopefully we'll give this a bash and uh, I'll be back in just a wee minute anyway so see you in a minute bye okay I've come back now I've literally I thought I better just show you how you can tell a dope already now I'm laughing here because we're Scottish in case you've never guessed by the accent and in Scotland we don't do things by half now I'm not having mashed potato with us tonight because that's my choice because Come and see these little babies, Kenneth. These are real Scottish snowballs. They have completely filled my pan. They are humongous, I think is the best way to describe them. And the way that you can tell when the dough ball is ready is it's no longer sticky, because it was sticky when you went in, and it's firm to the touch. So if you just want to touch them all, then you'll know that your dough balls are ready and I, for one, I'm like, this smells delicious, by the way, but I, for one, I'm so looking forward to these tonight. So I'll just leave it there. We'll put up a picture once it's served up. And as always, you can find the recipe on theorkneynews.scot. We've got our Orkney News channel on YouTube. And if you give us a watch and if you like it, leave me some feedback, subscribe, tap the wee bell so you get the notifications when the new videos go up. I think there's probably over 100 that you can be watching if you're new to the programme, if you want to catch up. And... Like I say, let me know if you give it a bash, how you get on, and I hope you enjoy it. So, thank you for watching. Bye!